on an adventure to Griffith, New South Wales with Murray Cod Australia. The journey starts with a tour around Murray Cod Australia's Bilbul Nursery. Ross Anderson and Matt Ryan, two parts of the brain and heart behind the operation, show me around. There are huge tanks of baby cod, with about 300,000 on site. The biggest challenge with nursing these fish is their natural aggression. As the bigger fish swim deeper in the tank, smaller fish are forced to the top. However, daily monitoring of frequent grading is performed to ensure healthy, sizable fish. Once the fish are mature enough, they're moved to ponds outside. And these vast ponds hold about 30,000 fish. Oxygen levels are measured and adjusted very carefully for each pond. What's really interesting is that the water contains mud and plankton and algae. It's the cod's natural ecosystem, which improves the texture and colour of the cod naturally. You see, a fish's metabolism produces this compound called geosmin. If it isn't filtered out of the fish properly, it'll permeate the taste of the fish which gives you that really muddy, fishy taste. But letting the cod thrive in its natural ecosystem means that the geosmin gets consumed by all the plankton and algae and other life, and you get this great-tasting, pearly white cod. So it was a fairly widely held belief that Murray cod uh, had had a muddy taste to it, and um, that's come from years of people catching fish out of the rivers, and probably people growing fish in farm dams and other, other growing techniques. So, uh, yeah, our system relies still on dams, but we actually hold the fish in cages, uh, which had been done before we started. Um, but, um, yes, we hold the fish in the cages in the dam, and that tends to uh, break down any waste products that are, that are in the water, and the fish come out tasting, yeah, perfectly clean and uh, with no money taste whatsoever. Amazingly, this farm has arguably one of the lowest eco footprints in the world. No water leaves the property back into other waterways. It's actually all recycled. What does sustainability actually mean, especially in terms of growing Murray cod? Uh, Look, I think sustainability means different things to different people, of course. But um, to me, I suppose, sustainability is growing something with with very little waste product or no no waste product and um, being able to use the resources that we have here at our fingertips and growing um, multiple products with, with the resources that we've got and um, so here we're in the Murrumbidgee irrigation area there's it's, you know, a lot of water gets used here every year for growing crops um, but there's you know, very little animal production and there was sort of no real aquaculture production before we started so um, here where we are now the fish the water comes onto the farm into the fish dams and then goes back out of the farm onto the crop onto the paddocks for irrigation so this is water that would have been used for irrigation anyway so um, the actual fish production is, um, yeah, it, it is 100% sustainable as far as the water goes because the water would have been used anyway. We're just reusing it through the fish before it goes out of the paddock. Over the weekend, I visited a couple of restaurants that showcased what Murray Cod Australia was trying to achieve. And one that really stood out for me was Limone Dining, run by Chef Luke Piccolo. He practices a farm-to-fork approach and his menu celebrates the rich Italian history and culture of Griffith. He paired an elegant steamed piece of cod with beautiful spring greens from his family farm. And along with other treats, Chef Luke and his partner Fabiola, who runs the front of house, gave us an unforgettable evening, which was generous in food and hospitality. And I think that's the core of what Griffith is about. It's about putting family, putting history and local produce on the plate. At the dinner, I met Roger Commons. He's another part of the brain and heart of Murray Cod Australia. He was full of stories and knowledge. He's a really interesting guy with a hugely diversified business portfolio, from running a cotton gin to farming Murray Cod to wine storage and even offering joyrides in his helicopter. Roger kind of showed me the potential of what Griffith offers, from its soil to its place in the Snowy Mountain irrigation system and to its community. You know, some of the industries are pretty secretive, um, but a lot of the industries that we're involved with are, are very open to sharing knowledge and, and encompassing new new players, particularly the cotton industry. The cotton industry is one which is very embracing of, of everyone in the industry. And they, because it's sold on the world market, you know, we're not trying to sell into a, into a niche market or a small market. So, 
people are not threatened by you know, losing market share, I guess, is sort of one of the the adventure continues. I visit the family-run McWilliams cellar door, and I'm treated to wine and food pairings that absolutely blow my socks off. Did you know that 25% of all of Australia's wines are produced in Griffith? Neither did I. It's no surprise that the family and community vibes continue into the Taste Riverina Food Festival. I attend a long lunch held at Piccolo Farm. It's actually Chef Luke's family farm. And there I meet incredible people, passionate about their craft of beer, wine, food. And at the end of the day, Griffith comes as a total surprise. It isn't a location I ever thought I'd visit, and much less love. Griffith didn't put on the bells and whistles. It didn't have to. It was just great food, great people, and a beautiful piece of the world. Here's to you, Griffith. Griffith.